Well, good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to uh, Northwest Houston's Adult uh, Sabbath School lesson for uh, July 1st, uh, 2023. It's the first week of the third quarter. And this quarter, we're going to be studying uh, the book of Ephesians, uh, written by Paul uh, to the church that he founded there. And uh, it, this book has been put together by uh, Dr. John uh, McVeigh, who is a professor of religion at Walla Walla University uh, in College Place, Washington. And uh, I like uh, uh, John McVeigh's approach to this book because in order to fully understand uh, the writings of Paul or any other uh, author in the Bible, we need to understand his audience and uh, his interaction with them. And so Paul approaches the book of Ephesians from a historical perspective. And uh, I'm going to go through some of the uh, things that, that uh, are, are important in our understanding of the book of Ephesians so that we can see how it, it uh, applies to us. So I'm going to start by uh, sharing my screen. I have a PowerPoint presentation uh, about uh, Ephesians. Um, uh, Ephesus was uh, the uh, fourth largest city in uh, the Roman Empire. Uh, and in that respect, it's a lot like Houston, Texas, because Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States. Uh, and in fact, uh, I, I personally consider Ephesus to be just a, a, a mini example uh, of what goes on here in Houston. Uh, but to understand why the, the um, uh, historical perspective is so important, I'm going to talk just for a minute about another city that Paul wrote to, uh, and that was... Um, the, the city of Philippi, uh, where, where he founded the church um, uh, in uh, Philippians. Uh, in the book of the Philippians, uh, Paul uh, thanked the people of Philippi uh, for always being there and supporting him in prison. Uh, when you're in a Roman prison, uh, the only way you get uh, your essentials, uh, clothing and food and other things, is if family and friends um, provide them for you. And the church of Philippi provided all of Paul's needs while he was in prison in Rome for, for those seven years uh, that he was in, incarcerated there. So here's a picture of the city uh, of, of Philippi. It was named for Philip of Macedonia, uh, who was uh, the emperor, uh, the father of Alexander the Great. It was a, a very wealthy city. Uh, you can see the mountains uh, in the back of this uh, picture. Those mountains are full of gold and silver. And uh, the people... Uh, living in Philippi, mined the gold and silver. And uh, as a result, uh, almost everyone in the, in the city was, was well off, uh, if not, if not uh, a wealthy. Uh, you see the, uh, the river that runs by the, uh, the city, uh, the bridge uh, on, on the lower right uh, corner. Uh, you may remember from the book of Acts that when Paul came to Philippi, uh, on the Sabbath, he went out and met uh, uh, Jewish women are worshiping there at the riverbank. Now, the reason that they were worshiping there uh, is that there was no synagogue in Philippi. Now, according to uh, a Jewish uh, custom, uh, unless there were 10 men, uh, Jewish men in the city, uh, you couldn't have a synagogue. So, so the Jewish population in Philippi was very, very small. And so the majority of the converts that Paul had when he was there uh, establishing this church were all Gentiles, and uh, they were wealthy Gentiles. And uh, as I said, they they would go on to uh, to fund uh, Paul in his uh, 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 imprisonment in Rome. But that's how you, that's how you study uh, the book from a perspective. Um, know a little bit about the history of the place that it was written to and the people that lived there, and that'll help you understand uh, who Paul was writing to and why he said the things he did. So let's take a, a look at Ephesians. Uh, from um, from that perspective, from a historical perspective. Uh, first of all, Paul went on three uh, uh, missionary journeys. Uh, on the first missionary journey, uh, he never got uh, as far as Ephesus. Uh, he stopped uh, at uh, uh, Antioch, is, is the farthest he went uh, toward the uh, uh, toward the uh, west. But on his second and third missionary journeys. Uh, he, he did stop at Ephesus. In fact, on the second uh, journey, he stopped at Ephesus for a short time uh, on his way to Jerusalem. 
for um, uh, the Passover, and uh, was so impressed by the by uh, the people he met there that he, he made it a point when he came back on his third missionary journey to spend three years there establishing the church, and uh, so he was he was quite uh, familiar with the people. Um, because it was just seven years later that he would write the book of Ephesians, seven years after founding the church. So um, uh, here's, a, here's a tentative chron chronology of Paul's relationship with Ephesus. Uh, first in AD 52 uh, was his, his uh, visit, uh, short uh, visit on his way to Jerusalem. Uh, you can see that in Acts 18 verses uh, 18 to 21. And he talks about stopping there on his way uh, to go to the Passover in Jerusalem. He came back a year later in uh, uh, AD 53 and stayed three years uh, till uh, 56, uh, ministering there, starting the church, establishing the church. And um, uh, he mentions it also in, in uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, at, where, where he mentions his, his stay there. In AD 57, uh, while at Miletus, Paul met with the elders from Ephesus. So a year after you left there, uh, the elders came to see him, and uh, it's in uh, Acts chapter 20, verses 17 to 38, where he talks about um, uh, encouraging them uh, and sending them back to uh, to the church. And then he wrote the letter uh, in about 61 to 62 uh, A.D., uh, somewhere in that time range. Uh, he he, opposed, he composed this letter while he was in prison uh, in Rome. Now, here's a, a picture of uh, just a quick sketch of the layout uh, of the city of Ephesus. Uh, it was a uh, port city. Uh, Houston's a port city. Uh, and you can see the, the harbor there. And, and uh, right next to the harbor, they have what they call a commercial agora, which was a, a place where the merchants would bring their, their wares in uh, and uh, change, exchange them. Uh, and then they would go, if you look at the far right of the screen, there was a civic agora which was a shopping center, a flea market, where the, uh, the, uh, uh, they would take these, these wares then and sell them uh, uh, to the public. In the middle, there was a library of Celsius. It was a uh, uh, very famous library, the, one of the most famous libraries in uh, all of Asia. Uh, only uh, Alexandria had a larger library than, than uh, the library at Celsius. Uh, there's a theater right in the middle of the town. Uh, uh, reminds you of Houston. Uh, we have uh, places of entertainment as well as uh, 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 libraries and, and uh, all over. Um, here's a picture of the that amphitheater that, that was uh, in the city. It was built by the Romans uh, using an architecture that was so fantastic that a person standing in, in, in the center of the amphitheater could speak and all 20,000 people sitting in the amphitheater could hear it without the assistance of any electronics uh, whatsoever. So um, it was just an amazing acoustics uh, that the Romans put into these theaters. And we'll find that when there was a riot, when the riot occurred um, over the, the teachings of Paul, uh, that the Ephesians brought uh, um, uh, uh, the trial to this amphitheater and, uh, and carried it out uh, here. Uh, they also had uh, sporting events. Um, there were gladiators, there were chariot races, there were uh, Olympics, uh, both foot races and wrestling and all, all many of the events uh, we have today. Um, so there was entertainment there, just as in Houston, we have uh, uh, baseball, basketball, football, and soccer, and as well as, well as, uh, as other things. So the people were entertained, highly entertained, um, and they had their, their favorite sports teams and, and uh, players uh, to, uh, to divert their attention from uh, what was important in life. Um, Ephesus was uh, a city uh, built uh, by the Romans. Uh, uh, you can see uh, uh, from this, uh, it, had, it was famous for having uh, waterways. It had sewer systems and, and water to all the homes. Um, it, uh, all the modern conveniences we would have, if you look at these sewer pipes, that are just like our modern sewer pipes. That's uh, where we got our ideas uh, for today. Uh, they had the first uh, public uh, uh, toilets in, in all of Asia. 
uh, based on the on the Roman principle. Um, but uh, only men could use the public uh, uh, restrooms. Uh, women had to go at home and hold it all day, uh, much like uh, today in, in, in the nation of India, where uh, there's a public restroom for every five men in the country, but there's only a, a public restroom for every 400 women. So uh, again, uh, uh, you know, these patriarchal societies um, held men in higher esteem than, than women. Uh, the wealthy people had frescoes on their walls, uh, looked like our modern wallpaper, uh, just they were quite uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, culturally. Um, uh, in Ephesus, there was a huge synagogue. Here's the remains of that synagogue. Uh, Jewish people were held in high regard uh, before Paul came along, because uh, just as in uh, uh, Jerusalem uh, and in, in uh, Judea, uh, Jewish people didn't uh, push their religion. Uh, they didn't talk about uh, God in public. Uh, they they stayed to themselves. Uh, and when Paul went through the streets proclaiming uh, Christ and uh, and him raised from the dead and, and put up this great stir, uh, as you remember from the riot that took place, uh, the leaders of the synagogue were dragged into the uh, uh, theater, uh, were beaten. And, um, uh, you know, these, these pagans... Uh, thought it was okay uh, to be a Jew. Uh, it was okay to be a Christian as long as you didn't tell anybody about your religion and, and try to push that. Uh, how many times today are, are we afraid to go out in public and, and speak the truth as Paul did? Uh, so uh, we can see the similarities here between uh, what went on in, in Paul's day and what's going on in our day. Here's a, here's a, a more detailed uh, look at, at the city. Uh, if you look on the left side, you can see the commercial agora, uh, where the uh, uh, merchants went and exchanged their goods. Uh, on the far uh, right, you'll see the uh, uh, civic uh, agora, where people went to shop, uh, like a flea market we would have today, uh, where you could buy anything from uh, clothing to uh, to food. Uh, right in the center of the city, if you look on the uh, uh, about the middle right, you'll see there was a brothel. Um, there were also three temples in, in the city uh, where people would worship their, their gods. Um, and uh, what was interesting uh, when archaeologists, uh, and, and there's a, a bathhouse you see uh, directly in the center of, of the screen. Uh, now, the bathhouse was quite interesting in that uh, women and children uh, could bathe in the bathhouse for seven hours a day during the daytime. Uh, but in the evenings and at night, only men and prostitutes uh, could be in the bathhouses. Uh, so uh, the city emphasized uh, a separation of family. Uh, again, uh, uh, men uh, from women and children. Uh, what archaeologists found is that from the brothel, there were underground uh, tunnels that led uh, all throughout the city. They went to the bathhouses. Uh, they went to the temples. They went to the library. So people that wanted to uh, uh, um, frequent the brothel could do it uh, undetected uh, by the public. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that brings to mind that today we have entertainment uh, on television where people can watch uh, uh, pornography and other, other things uh, without people knowing what, what they're doing uh, behind closed doors. And... Uh, so you'll find that when, when Paul wrote to the church, uh, he makes a very clear point uh, to bring up the fact that, uh, uh, you know, we, we need to be sexually moral and uh, we need to be Christ-centered. We need to be family-centered uh, and and um, and don't do uh, shameless immoral things. Uh, so that's uh, basically some of the some of the uh, the uh, uh, the ways that you can look at history and and understand what Paul wrote and why he wrote it and when he wrote it. Here's a typical of Diana, uh, or Artemis, uh, the Greek name and, and the Roman name. Uh, it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and it stood on a hill right outside of Ephesus, and you could see it uh, whenever you walked through the city. Uh, it was the most uh, impressive of all the temples. Uh, uh, the ones downtown were were quite small in, in compared to this one. Um, and of course, uh, the worship in all of these pagan temples involved um, temple prostitution uh, as well as uh, sacrifice. Um, and uh, 
uh, again, the immorality that was going on in the city was was uh, supported uh, by the religions that the people uh, um, uh, served. So when they became Christians, um, Paul uh, kept advising him to leave those things behind and and uh, and not do what they were accustomed uh, to having done uh, in their lives beforehand. Now here's a chart of uh, Paul's writings and uh, all of the books in, in the uh, in the New Testament. Uh, and you'll see uh, about in the middle, uh, you see uh, Colossians and uh, Philemon were written around 60 AD. Uh, that was when Paul first was imprisoned in, in Rome. And uh, he was imprisoned from 60 AD to somewhere between 66 and 68, uh, where he was uh, um, uh, uh, martyred uh, in, in, in Rome. So all the, all the books he wrote after uh, 60 AD uh, were from his prison cell. And you see uh, Ephesians and Philippians and Timothy and Titus, uh, Hebrews, uh, all of them were, were, were written in, in, this, uh, in this time frame. So, so uh, since he established the church in, 60, uh, uh, in 52 uh, AD, um, uh, he had, uh, the church was only about eight years old when he wrote uh, the book of Ephesians uh, to them. Uh, so uh, 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 quite a young church. Um, from from our perspective, most of us are, are in churches that are two and three generations uh, old, but uh, Christianity was was just in its infancy at the, at this time. Now, if you look at the Book of Ephesians, um, an overview of the uh, Book of Ephesians, um, the first part of the letter was about beliefs, uh, chapters one, two, and three, and chapters four, five, and six were on our behavior uh, as Christians. Uh, again, he wanted to establish to this young church. Uh, the importance of belief, spiritual wealth uh, first. Uh, chapter one is the richness in Christ. Chapter two uh, emphasizes the oneness in Christ. Chapter three is our privilege in, in Christ. And then uh, in, as far as our behavior goes, uh, chapter four, he begins to talk about life in the church, life in the body. Uh, chapter five was life in our families. Uh, again, the, the, the society did not emphasize uh, the importance of family. So uh, Christianity did, and so Paul had to reinforce the fact that uh, that uh, life in the family is important uh, by comparing it to uh, uh, Christ and, and the church. And he would end it with uh, life in the trenches, uh, talking about our spiritual warfare, our spiritual walk, um, this battle we're going to be we carry on day by day uh, in this world. So that was a that's a brief uh, a layout of, of the book of Ephesians. Uh, of course, it was written uh, when he was in Roman prison, a uh, time frame, uh, AD 60, 61. Uh, we don't know the exact date, uh, uh, somewhere around that time frame. And the author is Paul. And the reason they emphasize that is, even though three times in the book uh, he says, he identifies himself as Paul, uh, an apostle <laughs> of, of Christ, there are modern scholars uh, who try to uh, attribute it to someone else. Um, as they do so many other books in the Bible. But uh, we know as Seventh-day Adventists uh, that the Bible is a complete uh, unit. It is truth. Uh, it is not error. And if Paul says he wrote the book, uh, Paul wrote the book. And uh, so uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, uh, as we get into this uh, quarter's lessons. So uh, that's, a, that's a, a quick overview of... Uh, uh, The book of Ephesians. Let me see if I can stop my sharing here. There we go. So now let's uh, now let's get into the uh, the actual uh, study that we had this week. Uh, I hope you all did it and, and enjoyed uh, uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Mouvet, uh gave us um, on Sabbath afternoon. Uh, we began reading uh, by talking about uh, uh, the readings in the book of Acts uh, about Paul's uh, 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 journey there in Ephesus. Uh, and uh, he first entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews first. Whenever he went to a city, the first place he went to reason was with Jewish people because Jewish people understood the prophecies of the Old Testament. Uh, they were waiting for the Messiah, 
And so Paul always took advantage of first sharing the message uh, with them, as Jesus did when he was in uh, Judea, uh, sharing first with those who knew, and then uh, uh, exp he expanded it uh, to, to unbelievers, to Gentiles, um, when he could uh, get no more uh, Jewish converts. And uh, so we talked about how uh, uh, on his first visit, he was only there for a short period of time, uh, a few days or weeks, uh, as he waited for the ship to be reloaded uh, to go to Jerusalem. Uh, but then he came back, and uh, uh, and the second time he was there was when the, he had a great, <laughs> the, the great riot uh, that occurred, because uh, Paul was preaching that the idols made of uh, metal and wood uh, were not true, uh, uh, were were not true gods at all, uh, but things made by by human hands, uh, gods designed in the human image, not man made in God's image. And because of that, as people were being converted uh, to Christianity, they stopped buying their idols. And uh, there was quite a bit of uh, money to be made in, in idol uh, making idols in, in Ephesus. And, um, and so the, the, the uh, uh, silversmiths and goldsmiths uh, um, uh, drug the, the people from the synagogue because um, they thought that uh, as uh, Christianity had first started, as uh, just a, a different sect of Jews. They thought that the Jews were at fault with this. And so they drug the leaders of the synagogue in and, and um, they had this uh, this riot uh, over uh, them destroying their, their livelihoods. And uh, that, was, uh, uh, that was our reading uh, about uh, uh, on Monday, uh, about uh, uh, the uh, importance of, of shaking things up as Christians. Now, what do you think about that? Um, how many of you have witnessed to, to family members or witnessed to friends or witnessed to neighbors uh, and had success, had converts uh, uh, in a situation, uh, say a family member or, or a neighbor? Uh, what happens when that person converts to Christianity uh, over their beliefs, uh, in, in our case, most other uh, uh, people believe uh, uh, in, in ag uh, they're agnostics or atheists. Yeah. Um, what happens when a person becomes a Christian uh, and their values begin to change? What happens to their relationships to their families and, and to their friends and maybe even uh, relationships at work? What happens when a person becomes a Christian? Uh, do they face the same difficulties that, uh, that these early converts uh, uh, did uh, in your experience um you know christianity is not a, a is not a, a religion of the head knowledge it's a religion of to be practiced and um, if, if you can uh, you will have a change of behavior uh, if you change from a worldly uh, belief system to a christian belief system and um, and you will create waves and that was that was what the emphasis was about our uh, um, or Monday's lesson. Uh, I hope you got the. Uh, I hope you got that when you, uh, when you read it. Um, well, the rest of the week he went on talking about uh, 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 Paul's uh, encounters. Uh, he kept referring back to the Book of Acts that you might want to read. Uh, chapters 18 and on in, in the book of Acts where it talks about uh, his uh, his time in Ephesus uh, and the time with the people there. Um, but uh, on Tuesday, uh, we, we were, we moved on to uh, uh, Paul writing uh, to the Ephesians, uh, this letter to be read aloud uh, in, in those days, uh, words were so important that when you read from the scriptures, when you read these the, these letters, you never read them silently. Uh, you read them out loud. And uh, so the, the letter to the Ephesians uh, was uh, read aloud in house churches. Uh, and the reason it was read in house churches was the uh, Christians were thrown out of the synagogue. 
uh, in uh, Ephesus, just as they've been thrown out of the churches in Jerusalem. Um, uh, Christianity uh, was a, uh, um, a radical teaching, a radical uh, sect, and uh, the Jewish people just wouldn't allow them in, in their synagogues anymore. So house churches were what uh, were, were formed. And when you read uh, Paul's letters, you you often hear him say, uh, this letter is to the, to the church in the house of, and he would name the person who had opened their home uh, to these house churches. Uh, and we know from the spirit of prophecy that the day will come very soon when our churches will uh, will be closed down and we will have home churches, house churches here in this country. So uh, it's it's important for us to, to read and understand um, that uh, what was written uh, in the past will be repeated in the future. And we need to prepare ourselves um, for that time uh, by becoming uh, acquainted uh, completely with the uh, um, with the teachings uh, of the New Testament, if if I can if I can emphasize anything, it's uh, read the letters of the New Testament, um, read the Book of Acts. Um, these will show you how the church was founded, and that's how the church will end. Um, the, a quick overview uh, we were given uh, on the Wednesday of, of the entire book, uh, a little more in depth than than what I gave you earlier. It says that uh, uh, there's an opening greeting in verses one and two of chapter one. Uh, there's a blessing given in verses three to 14. Uh, Paul uh, gives a blessing to those that, that uh, read and understand this letter and follow it. Um, then in, in uh, verses 15 to 23 of chapter one, uh, he prays for believers to receive a Christ-focused wisdom um, and then he begins chapter two, uh, speaking about the once spiritually dead, uh, and now, uh, now they will be exalted with Christ. And that's uh, chapter two, verses one to 10, where he talks about uh, how before they came to know Jesus, before their conversion, uh, they were spiritually dead, uh, whether they were Jewish or Gentile. And... Uh, and now they're alive uh, in Christ. He goes on uh, in verses 11 to 22, talking about uh, Christ's creation of the church uh, out of Jews and Gentiles. And he brings up something that's that was quite uh, important. I, I I forgot to put the slide in, but uh, uh, we'll take, we can talk about it now. Uh, <clears throat> when Herod made the temple uh, in Jerusalem, uh, he put the temple on the, the road that led into Jerusalem from uh, Jericho so that anyone entering the city of, uh, of Jerusalem had to walk through the court of the Gentiles uh, to get into the city so they could see this marvelous temple that he had made. But in order to keep the temple, uh, as he would say, holy, he put a three foot high wall to surround uh, uh, the court uh, the temple uh, in the court of the Gentiles. And no Gentile could cross over that three foot hall, uh, that three three foot tall wall of separation. And Paul in in this letter uh, talks about how Jesus tore down the wall of separation, referring to the fact that Gentiles could now enter the presence of God um, as they couldn't uh, in the, in the Jewish temple uh, in Jerusalem. So that's that's an important historical fact that comes out in chapter two. Uh, that now Jews and Gentiles could both enter into the court, uh, uh, the presence of God. And chapter three, verses one to thirteen, uh, he he brings up Paul as a preacher. He he uh, again defines himself as Paul, the preacher uh, of Christ to the Gentiles. He calls himself the apostles of the Gentiles, the thirteenth uh, disciple, if, uh, if it were. Uh, <clears throat> He goes on in chapter 3, uh, verses 14 to 21, to talk about uh, praying for believers to experience the love of Christ. Um, and then uh, in chapter 4, he starts off uh, um, our, our, our walk with Christ um, by saying in verses uh, 1 to 16 that we should hold on to spiritually inspired unity uh, of the church. Uh, unity of the church is a very important thing to Paul. And, and not only in this letter, but in, in all of his letters. 
he talks about how we are one in Christ. Um, there should be no division in our churches. Um, division is not good uh, for people on the outside as they come in, uh, and it's not good for the church uh, as a body to have division. He goes on in uh, verses 17 to 32 in uh, chapter 4 to talk about uh, to live the new union, the new unity, uh, a nurturing life. Uh, we should lift each other up. We should help each other. We should nurture each other, not only providing for physical, but spiritual needs uh, of each other. Um, we should walk in love and light and wisdom. Chapter 5 talks about uh, verses 1 to 20. Uh, we should walk as Jesus walked. Uh, and uh, he brings that up uh, in those 20 verses. Um, and then in verses 21 to chapter 6, verse 9, we should uh, practice a Christ-shaped life uh, in our households. Uh, you know, Christianity begins at home. Uh, if you can't uh, behave as a Christian at home, you're not going to behave as a Christian in public. And it's not going to, you know... Uh, over and over again, he talks about uh, to be a, an elder, to be a deacon, to be a deaconess, uh, to hold any position in the church. We have to have that Christian behavior and raise our family uh, as Christ would uh, in the Christian uh, uh, manner. Uh, he goes on in chapter six uh, to talk about in, in verses 10 to 20, uh, to stand together uh, as an army. Uh, the church is an army of God. Uh, we're sp fighting a spiritual battle. Uh, with the world, um, you know, the Antichrist, as John would say in Revelation, um, is already was already in the world at that time. Antichrist means anyone practicing anything that stands against Christ. And so the spirit of the Antichrist was already in the world. And we are fighting a, a battle against uh, spiritual things, uh, not physical things. So we are a spiritual army uh, fighting with prayer and with words and with actions uh, in this world. And then he closed the book, uh, verses 21 to 24, with a greeting uh, uh, to, uh, to, to end uh, uh, his book. Now, um, that's, that's the overview of these first few weeks. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, you did your lesson this week. Uh, I hope you you read the, uh, the lesson and studied uh, this the overview that John uh, gives us uh, of uh, of the book, uh, and it'll prepare you for the for the next uh, twelve weeks as we go in depth uh, verse by verse and study uh, the book of Ephesians compared to the other writings that that Paul had uh, to the other churches, uh, because he said the same message over and over again to every church. Uh, but he personalized each letter uh, to the needs of that church, to what he understood uh, was going on in that church, uh, both its faults and its strengths. And um, those would help us to understand both our faults and our strengths and how we should uh, uh, behave and how we should support one another and how our church uh, should uh, relate to the society around it. So um, now let me just close uh, with, a, with a quick word of prayer. Uh, next week, I hope to have a panel here uh, as we discuss uh, in depth uh, our week two lesson. But um, but this week was just an introductory uh, uh, lesson to, to Ephesians. And um, if you haven't already uh, done your lesson, uh, the Sabbath is a good day to sit down and and, and go over it and uh, and read the texts uh, that are provided for you from Scripture uh, and uh, and the thoughts that, that John gave us. So let's have a word of closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much that our entire Bible is a historical document. And you wrote it as a historical document so we could verify it archaeologically, historically, but also so that we could understand the people to whom it was written, uh, the, the culture they, they lived in, so that we could understand the things that were said to them and how they relate to us in our culture today. And help us, Lord, as we continue this lesson, uh, this study uh, of Ephesus, to see uh, Houston in the church of Ephesus to see uh, how uh, the words uh, written 2000 years ago relate to us uh, as we try to witness to those around us, as we try to strengthen one another, and as we try to be uh, your army uh, fighting the battle in these last days of preparing Houston 
uh, Northwest Houston uh, and wherever else we live in Houston um, to fight the battle and and hold fast uh, until Jesus comes. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Well, thank you all for listening and uh, and thank you for uh, 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 attending today. <laughs>